Yes, uh, let's continue our discussion on, on small talk. Uh, we just uh, talked about the different small talk environments that are available to programmers. And we mentioned that we are actually just going to experiment with GNU small talk, which is a command line interface. So here is a, a link that you can use uh, to download uh, GNU small talk. <clears throat> so if you're using uh, Windows, you can use the pre-built uh, GNU Smalltalk installer. If you're using Mac, you can use uh, the instructions that are enumerated here. And if you're using Linux, you can use the instruction uh, in this point here. So you should have, at least if you're running Windows, Mac or Linux, you have... Uh, the option of uh, installing GNU Smalltalk on your on your machine. Now, as I said, uh, it's a command line interface, and let's in what follows, I'm assuming that you're installing on Windows. So let's say you're installing it to to uh, your C drive uh, under the directory GNU Smalltalk, and that's actually what I've done already. So I have here. In a common prompt, uh, I have uh, GNU Smalltalk installed, and uh, you can see it in the uh, in a subdirectory of my uh, root of my C drive. And uh, I can start the shell. Remember, Smalltalk is an interpreted language, so uh, there's an interpreter that interprets the the uh, the statements, the Smalltalk statements uh, on the fly. So, it, in order to start the interpreter, I can use GST. And now I'm inside the interpreter, and the prompt says basically GNU Smalltalk is ready. And uh, to quit the shell, I can either do Control D. I'm not sure that that actually doesn't work every time, but at least I can do Object Memory Quit. So if I do Object Memory Quit, and notice what I'm doing. Uh, remember that Smalltalk is. Uh, uh, the design of Smalltalk is uniform. Everything uh, is an object, object, and the only thing that I can't really do can do is send a message to an object. So I'm sending a message here: quit to the uh, class object memory, and now I quit. Um, now a program can, of course, be written to a file instead of writing a program inside the interpreter. And say, for example, if I have a program inside. The uh, in a file called program.st, st for small talk, then I can execute the program at doing gst program.st. And uh, let me actually here I have the program.st, and what is this program? This is the program that we saw earlier. Remember, this is the program that we went over in the previous session. Let me just increase the font here. And this is the program that uh, asks the user to enter a line. The user enters a line, which is a string, and then it basically counted the occurrences of each character in the string that the user input. And if I run this, I can do it the way it's mentioned on the slide. I can say GST uh, with the program. ST. Now let me actually see if I can increase the font here as well. Let's look at this way. Yes, this is better. So let's do this. So it says enter a line. And if I type in something like, well, small talk is an elegant language. And then I get a bunch of numbers. And why is that? Because the program actually counts the occurrences of each possible letter. So A appears six times, B, C and D do not appear, E appears uh, three times, uh, E is in elegant, two times in elegant, and once in language, and so on. 
So the, the program seems to work, the program that we went over earlier. So this is the way to, if you've already written a program, you can keep it in a, in a separate file and then ask the interpreter to interpret and execute the, the, the program. Now, what is the best way to, to uh, uh, get acquainted with the language? Well, of course, uh, going through some tutorials or some base uh, material. And there is a, there is a, a website, uh, smalltalk.gnu.org, which has a, a lot of things um, available about Smalltalk. It has some documentation, uh, uh, books, and frequently asked questions, and so on, and the newest versions. Now, one thing that comes in handy when you are uh, studying Smalltalk is the uh, is the base uh, library or the, the library reference. Uh, we saw in our example, if we go back to our program, that we're using uh, classes that, ha that are basically part of the environment. So like back is a class that is already a part of the environment. We didn't have to implement that class. The transcript is a, is a part of the environment as well. And uh, in this library reference, we can see a list of the base classes that come with the GNU Smalltalk uh, environment. Um, so for example, here is BAC, the BAC that we used earlier. The BAC is uh, defined in a separate namespace, which is called Smalltalk. Namespaces uh, are in Smalltalk are similar to namespaces in, uh, or, or the the purpose of a namespace is similar to the purpose of a namespace in C++. Uh, the superclass is mentioned here. What is the parent class of the class BAC? Um, and uh, in which category is this? So there's a way to categorize uh, different classes. So the back class in a, is in a special category called uh, collections on ordered. And then I have some information about uh, um, uh, individual methods and they are also categorized. So uh, in the back class there are um, the uh, methods are categorized into different classes like if I do adding, if I click on adding then in that category there are two uh, methods the add method that expects an object and that is something we would use if we add uh, an object to our back as we indeed did in our centers here where we said f add colon a particular object. What was that object? Well, that was the lowercase representation of a character. So that's our add object, uh, sorry, add uh, method. And then there's another method here, add colon, uh, add colon with occurrences colon. So that's the name of the object, add with occurrences. Well, that method expects an object and then uh, how many times that object should be added. So you, th this comes in handy, the, the base, the library reference, which includes the base classes. So if you have to look up information about objects and uh, their methods, this is, is an important resource. Now, there are manuals that you can have a look at. And one thing that would be good for you to do is to look at the tutorial basically go through the tutorial and the tutorial is uh, divided into various sections like getting started, some information about classes, the hierarchy, how you create classes and so on. Uh, just for now I'm gonna look at some simple things here in, the getting, in getting started. So we already actually know how to start the system, we do just GST and then the interpreter is ready and then I can start to, to, to play around with the system. And uh, for example, Hello World is really the first program that everyone uh, uh, is supposed to learn when you're learning a new language. So I can 
inside the system do hello world and then write here print line so what am I what am I doing here uh, remember small talk is very the syntax of small talk is extremely simple we're always sending a message to an object and on the right hand side I have the message print line and on the left hand side I have an instance of a string so this is hello world print line and if I hit enter I get hello world actually twice which looks a little bit strange but the explanation is here the system then prints back hello world to you it prints it twice the first time because you asked to print it because we sent the message print line and the second time because the snip evaluated to hello so there's an evaluation of what you print so for example if I just do this hello uh, comma world and hit enter without asking without sending a message the interpreter automatically evaluates whatever I pr uh, input so that's why we got it twice there now we can uh, go th uh, look at the s some simple math here for example if I do 9 plus 7 it evaluates to 16 no, s no big surprise but what's important to know here is uh, that the uh, a message is being sent. Remember, everything is an object and everything proceeds by sending messages. So what we are actually doing here is that we are sending the message plus to the integer uh, instance 9 with the parameter 7. So uh, this is just very similar to what we did earlier the same philosophy we're sending the print line message to the an instance of a string here we're sending the plus message to an instance of integer the instance being nine with the parameter seven and you can try out these different uh, uh, expressions so for example if we do two plus three times four two plus three times four uh, now what's interesting here is that we get 20 the the uh, what we should have expected is that we should we got uh, two plus 12 which is 14 because uh, uh, multiplication has higher precedence than than, than plus but remember we're always sending messages here so what we are actually doing is that we are first a small talk evaluates 2 plus 3 by sending the plus message to 2 with the parameter 3 and gets 5 and then sends the multiplication message to the result so we're basically doing something like this 20 this is what small talk actually did 2 plus 3 the result is an instance of integer with a value 5 and then sends multiplication to it with the parameter 4. So that's this is something that one has to uh, be aware of in small talk that it doesn't. Standard uh, precedence rules don't apply. Standard arithmetic uh, precedence rules. So what I suggest is that you go through this tutorial and play around with uh, a small talk to get a feeling for for the language and understand uh, better the the concepts that we have been talking about